again YouTube Gamer Dad here we are going to start uh, the sixth video in our Pong clone tutorial series and uh, I mentioned in the last video that we are going to cover the ball class and also collision in this video I think the ball class is going to run a little long uh, so I think we'll just stick with that for this video and the next video I'll, it'll be a, a somewhat short video but we'll handle collision there so I can explain it a little better alright with that uh, let's get started um, we're going to go and create a new class. I click your uh, Pong tutorial and then add a class. It's going to be a class. We're going to call this just ball class. It's just going to be ball. That's CS. Okay, first, like in our other class, we're going to copy our using statements here, just the XNA statements. Place them in our ball class. Drive that from Microsoft. That XNA. That framework. That game. Okay. And what do we need for our ball? Just uh, it's gonna be a lot of the basic stuff like our paddle. Um, first, we're gonna need a public vector two. We're gonna call that position. And we can also name this position because uh, in this ball CS and the paddle CS are different. So um, position in the paddle CS is just um, it's just for the paddle class. I'm just going to stay in there. We can use also that's why we can also use position in our ball class. Call it the same. Uh, next, we're going to need a texture for our ball. So public texture 2D, and we're just going to call that texture. Um, a couple of um, int variables, uh, the width and height of our ball, um, a public float, and our speed, just so we can uh, um, modify the speed a, a little better than just using whole numbers with an int, um, and then a couple of booleans. Uh, uh, this is going to detect the, f we're going to determine, the way I'm going to work the collision with the ball, it's going to be separate from the collision of the ball to the paddle. Um, we're going to handle all the, the collision with the ball and the walls uh, of our screen uh, within the ball class. So, and you'll see what, where we're going with that uh, here in a minute. So we're going to make four public bulls. We're going to call them moving down left. Moving down right, moving up right, and moving up left. Um, and basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn these true and false based on, uh, let's say it's the ball is um, in the middle middle of screen, it's traveling up and to the left, it hits the top wall. I'm going to um, turn it moving from up left false and make it true moving to down left. Uh, you'll see what I mean here. <coughs> Okay, let's make our constructor. It's a public ball. And like like last time, I did it again. That goes up here. And then we're going to set our defaults. And also what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to create access to our content um, on the right over here, uh, access within this class to our content in our project. So, the write this line here: root directory equals content, and then that will give us access within this class uh, to our content in the project. Okay, we'll set our speed equal to six. Um, our width equal to 20, which is the width of, if you go into your zip file that I supplied in the second video. You know what, I'll actually throw another link to that zip file in this description as well, just for the people that haven't grabbed it yet. Um, uh, and the ball that I have in there is, is 20 by 20, so we'll set that, that to those. 20 in the height. And we're going to set moving down left 
to true because when the game starts, we're gonna have the ball in the center of the screen, and uh, just for for ease here, we're just gonna when the game starts, the ball is just gonna start moving down and left uh, towards the first player. So moving down right will equal false. Moving up left equal false, and moving up right will equal false. Our texture, we'll just set it to null for now. Our position, we will set to vector 2.0. And then that is it for now. We're going to be adding more stuff to this class in future tutorials. Like I'm going to handle the uh, the scoring system with the text on the screen within this class as well. Uh, just because we'll know when when the ball hits hits the wall behind one of the two paddles, then we'll know to uh, increase or decrease the score uh, for whatever player scored that point. All right. So next, we'll make a draw function for our ball. That will be sprite batch. And what we're going to have in our draw is the same exact thing as we have in our paddle, just sprite batch dot draw. The texture that we will be assigning in our load content in the main, our position, which we'll also be assigning there, and our default as usual, white color. Okay, we'll comment these right away. Next, of course, will be our ball update. And this is going to be a little lengthy, and this is why I, I decided to split the um, ball class and the collision detection uh, videos into two instead of just both in this one, because this will take a little bit while I explain what's going on and why I did it this way. So, public void update. And we're going to start by setting... Um, uh, we're going to be doing a lot of if statements here. So the first one, the first four statements are just going to be um, setting our direction and the way the ball travels according to which boolean is is true. So this will be up left. So if the ball is moving up and to the left, we will give it some direction here. Position dot y is negative or equal to speed and position dot x is negative or equal to speed. So what this is doing is uh, the position y um, going negative would be up and um, going negative on the x-axis would be going left. So the, this is going to make the ball travel up and left um, at this speed at 6. Okay, and we'll do this for the other four. Uh, we'll go down left, and we can actually, it'll be quicker if we can just copy these, and we'll throw these down here in each one. So if moving down left, position X, position Y will be plus or equal to speed and position x will be minus or equal to speed. So we leave that. So if it's moving down left, going down to the down bottom left corner of the screen, the y will be increasing because it's going down and the x will be de uh, going left, so we neg so it's negative there at the speed again to 6. So it'll be moving down and left. Upright, paste So, if we're moving up and to the right, position x will be equal to, um, plus or equal to speed. Position y will be equal negative or equal speed, because it's, it's going up uh, on the y, so it's negative, and it's going right on the screen, so it's positive on the x-axis. And I'll stop explaining that, because 
I'll just kind of keep repeating myself here. And then we'll go down right. Paste. Meaning down right. If moving down right, then position dot x will be plus or equal to speed, and the y will also be plus or equal to speed. Okay, so here's where we're going to set um, the if statements that make it that will set the ball in the correct direction uh, by setting the boolean true or false uh, uh, based if it's hitting one of the walls. So we'll comment all these two so um, you'll get the idea. Uh, first of all, we'll start with moving up and left and bouncing off of the top wall. So if the ball is moving up and to the left and it bounces off the top wall, so moving up, left, and the position dot y so less than or equal to 0 plus 25 then moving down left will equal true and moving up left equal false so basically if it's moving up and left to, and it hits the top of the screen which would be y um, minus the bumper the size of the bumper, so it'll be bouncing off the bumper. It's moving up left, and it hits that point. Um, moving up left is going to be set to false, and then moving down left will be set to true. So it'll be coming up the top of the screen, hit the wall, and start moving down and left. So if moving down left and bouncing off the left wall, So if it's moving down left and the position dot x is less than or equal to zero, moving down left will equal false. So we're going to turn that off. And then moving down right will equal true. Moving up left, and bouncing off the left wall. And we can just, actually we can just start making um, else if statements here if we want. Moving up and to the left. And the position dot x is less than or equal to zero. Then we're going to go moving up right equals true, and moving up left equals false. So we have covered so far. If the ball is moving up and left, bounces off the top wall, it's going to go down and left. If it's moving down and to the left, it bounces off the left wall, it's going to start moving down and right. If the ball is moving up left and bouncing off the left wall, from the bottom of the screen to the left wall, it's going to move up and to the right. So if moving down left and bouncing off bottom wall, position dot y is greater than or equal to 768 minus 45 so it'll be the very end of your screen um, moving down left in position y so then we're going to go moving up left equals true and moving down left equals false. S 
Next one. Lift moving down right and bouncing off right wall. Position dot x is greater than or equal to 1024 minus width, which would be the width of our ball, 0.1. 